Welcome to Crime 411. The case of Brianna Balcom and her daughter Journey is one of the most emotionally difficult cases that I think I've ever covered. And not only because of how horrific it is, but because of who it's happening to. And Brianna is an absolutely extraordinary, amazing, incredible human being. And what is happening to her and her daughter is one of the most disgusting cases of injustice I think I've probably ever seen in my whole life. Oh, better. Love you. Love you. Who loves you? Me. And who else? Who is that? Candace. Yes. We all love you, right? Yeah. Okay, baby. You're gonna be good, right? Yes. Oh, I gotta wipe more tears? Yeah. Mama's still crying? <laughs> yeah. You would never imagine in a million years that the video you're watching is a video of Brianna being forced to say goodbye to her daughter, Journey after false allegations were made of child abuse which had been completely proven to be false and the little girl was still thrown into the foster care system this is the video of brianna having to say goodbye to her daughter all right well we're gonna be strong right strong what's your slogan what's your thing it's not about the what not about the combination, it's about the journey. Yes, ma'am. And I love you, baby. Too. This is only temporary, okay? She's the best mom in the That is one of the most heartbreaking things I could ever imagine. And when you hear how this went down, you are going to be as angry and sickened and infuriated as I am. Let me tell you a little bit about why Brianna is so amazing, okay? When she was 18, she was involved in different types of ministry outreach, social work kind of thing, okay? And she met two young ladies who were pregnant and had no place to go. Now, mind you, this girl was 18 years old at the time, okay? And instead of doing what most grown folks would do, she had these girls, both of them, move in with her so that they didn't have to wind up pregnant without resources and no one to turn to. That's amazing at any age, let alone at 18 right with this one of the girls asked Brianna mind you again she's 18 and the girl asked her if she would please adopt her unborn baby when she was born because she could not take care of the child and she wanted to make sure that the baby didn't wind up a victim of the foster care system and I do say victim because that is what it is a lot of the time okay 18 year old brianna agreed so six months after journey was born brianna went to court and became journey's legal mom fast forward a couple of years brianna is enjoying her life with her daughter and she is in college for social work and her neighbor Cynthia Barboza, who is also a fellow classmate for social work, decides that based on jealousy, she is going to call in over 30 false allegations of child abuse against Brianna. The police came out. Child Protective Services came out. The girl was interviewed. She was examined by doctors and there was no sign of abuse whatsoever at all. They later told Brianna that when Barboza was calling these allegations in, she was using different aliases to try and make it look more legitimate. Okay? That is malicious, evil, sick, twisted, and calculated. And 
CPS even stood as a witness on behalf of Brianna saying that there was no evidence whatsoever of abuse and that there was no reason to remove Journey from the home. Now, if you were in that situation, like the first thing you would be thinking was, I have to get the hell away from this girl, right? Because she lived right next door. And that is exactly what Brianna did. She filed two police reports. So she definitely legally did what she needed to do. And she contacted the college and told them that she was in a situation where she did not feel safe, understandably so. Obviously, this girl is crazy. And asked them for assistance to move into a dorm on campus so that she could get away from this girl. And that's what she did. So you would think that would be the end of it, right? But no, it wasn't because this girl is so hateful that she continued to call in false allegations. One of them even said, saying that um, Brianna had her daughter in a 400 degree oven. What? To call in these allegations, the police department from that area, because she had moved, came out, determined there was no abuse. And then Child Protective Services came out, opened a new case at, a, at this other location where she had moved to. And Carmisha Sanders, the CPS worker assigned to the case, did zero due diligence in finding out what had happened before and looking into the fact that there was a case open that was closed. She didn't check into anything like that. She just took this girl's word for it that there was abuse and literally ripped Journey away from her mother and the only loving home she's ever known in her life. But it gets worse. Not only did she rip the girl away from her mom, she put her into the foster care system where she now is a victim of physical and sexual abuse. She didn't even tell Brianna that that had happened for a month. She hid that from her mother. Moved this little girl around eight times to eight different foster homes. Well, I emailed Carmisha because I wanted to give her an opportunity to offer her side of the story and her recollection of the events that led up to this. And she did not reply, but I'll go ahead and show you that email. And I'm not going to read the whole thing because it kind of just reiterates everything that I've just said. But I do want to go ahead and at least show the email. I also copied whoever their lawyer is, um, who was copied on another email that I had come across and somebody from the police department who was copied on another email and none of them replied. Anyhow, here is the email that I sent. I sent this today at 1.25. And it is now 10 o'clock in the evening and no one has replied. But here you can see that I, I basically told her that I was covering this case on Crime 411. And as a professional courtesy, I did want to give her an opportunity to speak with me and give her side of things instead of just, you know, basically throwing allegations out there. And I explained to her, like I just did in this video, what I have come to understand and that if she has some documentation to prove to me that there is actually a different set of circumstances that aren't being told here, that she is more than welcome to reach out to me. Otherwise, I will be reporting this information as the alleged truth, because that is all the information that I have to go by. And I have seen documents from doctors saying that the little girl was never abused, ever. So again, like I said, I sent that today at 125. And it is now 10 o'clock at night and no reply. I don't know about y'all, but to me, silence speaks a thousand words. Now, there are times when negligence causes consequences of epic proportions, right? And this is one of those times. This little girl now for the rest of her life is going to carry with her the fact that she was sexually assaulted. And there are two people who are solely responsible for that. Carmisha Sanders, who removed the little girl from the actual safe house she was in, and Cynthia Barboza, who, believe it or not, she actually is working now as child care service worker. What? How in the world is this girl employed? How is this girl not even in jail is the real question. You're going to file 30 false allegations under all these different names, right? That are proven not to be true. And you're gonna to continue to harass this poor girl, Brianna. And not only are you not in jail, but you're actually working as a child protective service worker. 
what planet am I on? Really? And as much as I wish that I was joking right now, I'm not. There she is. That's from her LinkedIn profile. She's actually working in social work. How about working for the prison system with a striped outfit? How about that? Well, the current status of this case, as I understand it, is that there is supposed to be a court hearing in October. Brianna does have supervised visitation with her daughter, which is ridiculous. Don't get me started. This case just makes me so angry. Um, but this picture that you're looking at is actually from this week when she had a visitation with her daughter and she did a whole theme for her, Dr. Seuss, I Love to Read, um, which I thought was absolutely awesome. And you can see the smiles on both of their faces and these, these two people belong together. So anyhow, Brianna has um, retained counsel and I was told it is one of the best lawyers in the state of Texas. So I am hopeful that justice will be served I am supposed to do an interview this week on Sunday with a lady named Tanya who is very close with Brianna and an advocate for children. Um, and she says that of all the cases that she's done, and she's been doing this for a long time, she has never seen one as terrible as this. So please make sure to hit subscribe and get updates on this story and other stories. Again, I'm Melissa Marquet, and we'll see you soon.